and welcome back to the channel. We'll be doing um, a video that the British know quite a lot about, which is the Falklands. This is the first in the mini war series, and there we go. Hi, Anthony Carey, fifth Viscount of Falklands. I would very much like for you to go to Chile and locate the wreck of a Spanish treasure ship for me. Okay. In fact, this did happen, and that's how they. Were. they this is eight thousand miles away as well, hey, so they couldn't really island. just send anything over. It take. Several weeks for a life to get from one side of the US to the other, never mind. The to down. They found it to be cold, wet, and miserable. Just like home. So they established a colony in 1765. It is like that. There's a bit of though. Until presumably there was an awkward moment where they ran into each other. <laughs> then the Spanish yeah. showed up and told the French that a couple hundred years earlier, the Pope drew a line on a map and said all of this belongs to Portugal. So yeah, the line of demarcation, I think it was, or something like that. Yeah, the Pope drew an imaginary line. The line was 2,193 kilometers west of the uh, Cape um, Verde Islands. It gave to Portugal. So yeah, all of that would belong to Portugal, and all of that I think it's Spain. Where is that? Way? and that the island was in Spain's territory and they would like the French to hand over their settlement now since the two were good friends and Spain was willing to pay in cash money <laughs> yeah, the two Catholic blood, nations. since they were still a little bitter about the recent seven years war thing they made sure to warn the Spanish not to let those dirty English on the other side of the island take over so Spain went over to the English and explained Pope, Pope line on map, map Spain's island up. And the English said, yeah, right, this is our island. But we the got here first. Guns, so they kicked them off anyway. But then England threatened to go to war. So Spain went to the Eight thousand miles away from said, Hey, it looks like stuff is about to go down. You in on this? And the French minister of war said, yeah, yes. and we'll launch a full-scale invasion of England and party like it's 1066. But then but, King Louis the Fifth yeah. said, one, you're insane. This was actually when they had fire. a good king. Sorry, Spain, we're not ready for a war right now. So Spain had to give the English their settlement back, saying it's still our island, and the English said, no, it's our island. Then some colonists in North America got a bit rowdy, so the English had to leave their settlement to go American focus on Revolution. that, but they left behind a plaque that said this is totally still our island. So the island was in Spanish hands, but then a French guy, no, not that one, yeah, that no, one, turned on the Spanish, the took over most of the country, country, and captured King time. Ferdinand VII. And in response, the <laughs> Spanish colonies in South America started buying for independence. Yeah, so which then happened quite a few. also had to leave the islands. And for a couple of decades, so the British. islands were left uninhabited, except for the penguins, some fishermen, and the gauchos, which are basically like cowboys, but cooler and Spanish. -er. I love and the gauchos. from Hamburg, living in the now independent United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata, heard about the feral cattle roaming the Falklands and thought it would be a good way to make some well, money. Well, no, not really, because so Patrick doesn't permission make that much money. Buenos Aires and the British government to set up trade there as a private venture. Some American ships came down and began hunting whales and seals around the islands, and Verne wasn't too happy about it. So he asked Buenos Aires for some military and assistance. And this is how the controversy started. Said, Mess, do it yourself. Gave him some weapons and appointed him governor of the islands. So he seized the British ships island. and arrested their crews. In response, two things happened. First, America came down and said, Nice settlement you have there. Would be a shame if someone destroyed it. And destroyed it. And then they destroyed it. Second, Britain heard I like how I'm simply by going through the back story to get a little bit more context. We're officially claiming the islands as theirs. So Britain showed up and said, Hey, didn't you see our plaque? And since they had more guns, they kicked them off the island. And oh, the Falcons Lord, remained firmly guns. in British hands for the next century. They officially became a crown colony in 1840. Port Stanley became the island's capital in 1845. And the I Cal think Heights it still is. weren't worth much, so they imported sheep from Britain in 1851. Two world wars came and went, and all this time, the Argentines yeah, well, never received claim over the islands. Wars. Now it's 1976, and after a couple civil wars, a new brutal military dictatorship sponsored by the yeah. US fight against communism has taken control in Argentina. That's what happens when America just wants to get rid of communism. The economy had been struggling for a long time, and Galtieri had been unable to improve the situation. Now, if you ever find yourself the brutal military leader of a struggling... The struggling South American country use a tactic that had been tried in test throughout history, go to war. This was used by many countries. Uh, Russia used it just before World War One. That's the first one that comes to mind. 
Mexico, I think, also did it. South American country, and you start getting into hot water, here's a bit of advice that has been tried and tested throughout the centuries. Start a war to distract everyone from their misery. Yep. Galtieri knew how popular he would be if he could finally take back well, Argentina's last be Malvinas Austria. from the occupying British. Not there Austria. had been proposals to cut British military spending, and the ice patrol... Um, uh, bah, 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 bah. Nope, can't really work this time. HMS Endurance had been withdrawn from the area, so the Argentinians assumed the British may not even bother doing anything about the invasion. After easily capturing the largely uninhabited South Georgia Island, 600... Ar Which I think is now British. Argentine troops were sent to the Falklands. The small number of Royal Marines and other British forces stationed there put up a small amount of resistance, but in the end had to surrender. So, one thing you have to learn about the British Army, they might have very, very few people, but with the people they have, they train them really well so that one person can act like 10 or 20 especially when you have the royal marines who are one of our strongest pieces of army to the larger argentine force crowds in argentina celebrated the news but they were wrong to assume the british would do nothing because the person in charge of 8,000 miles ish and i guess they're going to talk about uh, margaret thatcher also known as the iron lady uh, I She's a bit controversial, but about half the people over here hate her. About half the people over here love her. It's like Marmite or Vegemite if you're in Australia. United Kingdom at the time was this lady. Thatcher was a somewhat controversial prime minister, but whether you loved her or hated her, for example, she immediately declared an exclusion zone around the islands. And yep, organized and that meant that if anyone went in there, they'd be killed. For the, Falklands. the United Nations expressed concern at the Argentine invasion. All South American nations, apart from Chile, backed Argentina. And since the United States had propped up the Argentine dictatorship, Reagan went to Thatcher and said, Could you maybe. Yeah, so Reagan was like, Can you not start a war? And then. Uh, Thatcher said no, and so Reagan just gave her lots of weapons. Just let them have the islands? And Thatcher said no. Okay, here, have some weapons. Fighting a war over 8,000 miles from home was a logistical challenge for the British. They requisitioned civilian cruise ships and containers, and they used British-owned Ascension Island as a forward base. By the time they arrived at the Falklands in May, the Argentine forces had had time to entrench themselves. The first task for the British was to gain control of the seas, which they did easily. On the 2nd of May, well, a British yeah, submarine we have sank an Argentine cruiser. Maybe. The sinking was controversial, no, as no, it occurred no. outside the British exclusion zone. It was also the largest loss of life in a single incident during the war. And in response, the Argentine Navy withdrew from the island. The next task for the British was to gain air superiority, while the Argentine Air Force controlled the sky. Yeah, so they it had three airfields, the um, and airports, the Falkland Islands do. So and taking them was quite hard because we only had the navy, and if we wanted to land, we'd have to deal with the air. So it got a bit awkward at some points trying to actually land on the um, on the islands. They were able to inflict considerable damage on the Royal Navy below. Days after the sinking of the General Belgrano, two Argentine Super Etendars carried out a raid on the HMS Sheffield and sank it with an Exocet missile. For weeks, yeah. the Argentine Air Force would carry out now controversial. And heavy casualties that on the Royal Navy, with British sea harriers doing their best to take out as many of the Argentine aircraft as they could. While the battle in the skies raged on, San Carlos yeah, was yeah. chosen as the best landing site of the British Grand Force. An SAS raid took to out Argentine defenses on Pebble Island. In fact, the RAF. If I remember correctly, it's the oldest um, air military division that has been going, I think, since 1916. We sailed through Falkland Sound to flush out any Argentine supply ships. The landings began on May 21st, with Argentine aircraft carrying out full-scale raids on the task force ships taking part in the landing, damaging several and sinking a few. But anti-aircraft cannons and sea harriers shot down many of the aircraft in what became a major turning point for air support. Yes, the sea harriers actually did very well, and um, the... Our air cannons actually worked much better than we thought they would in the war, so we didn't actually properly need air superiority in landing. Superiority, and a beachhead was successfully formed. Then the ground troops began their movements out of San Carlos, across the north towards Stanley, and south toward the Argentine stronghold at Goose Green. In the following battles, a clear trend emerged. The Argentine conscripts put up a good fight. And with in the fact, I think this is our most recent war we've been in. Well, that is directly involving us you do have the afghan war and the iraq war but that's about it tough muddy terrain the war was by no means easy for the british but with highly skilled but, royal marine commanders okay. and parachute regiment troops exactly. the british would often the find marines. themselves taking on larger numbers of argentinian soldiers but would still come out victorious with minimal casualties the 14 hour long battle yeah the royal marines are heavily heavily trained for stuff like this they are our greatest asset in the army by far 
we've won battles where we've had one person for every ten uh, of enemy and we still come out on top. Goose Green commenced on the night of May 28th. The battle ended in a decisive British victory with over 900 Argentinians surrendering. Then, with 5,000 reinforcements arriving from the 5th Infantry Brigade, the British started preparing for their final assault on Stanley. In a series of hard-fought battles, they took control of the hills and mountains surrounding the town as the Argentine forces withdrew with British ships shelling the- We had to kind of bottleneck that down because we couldn't retreat pop properly to the hills and mountains. So we kind of had to use our navy as well to kind of- Attack Port Stanley at the same time. Positions from offshore, utterly surrounded. On the 14th of June, the Argentinians surrendered, and the war was over. The two-month-long war claimed hundreds of lives and left the islands strewn with minefields that still pose a problem to this day. Yeah. Argentina still claims the islands, but in 2013, a referendum was held, and the islanders voted 99.8% in favor of remaining British. Plus, oil was just found near the islands, so the British probably aren't going to give them up anytime soon. Yeah. So that was also one reason why we don't want to give up the islands anymore but most people still want to stay british so they want to stay british so they want to stay british anyway that's the end of the video so like and subscribe and bye